Hans Wormhat, this is a quick video just on lukewarmers and on what it means to to bear your cross, to carry the cross. And it kind of goes along with all these free Martin trannies out there, all of these holier than thou fake Christians out there. I've always, ever since a child, I've the very few experience I have being around churches feels evil, feels dark, it feels phony, it feels superficial, and that's because it is. That's just the way it is, right? We we now know that all those instincts that we had as children, they were right. Jesus has been with us since the beginning. So let's just get started. What what does your plastic Christian always do? Oh, John 3.16. Oh, John 3.16. I believe in Jesus, so I'm saved. Well, Jesus Christ knows your heart, so he knows how superficially or how much you actually believe in him. So if you just have a totally superficial understanding of Christ, if you have just a totally superficial, if the only thing about Jesus is this like label that you attach to yourself, oh, I believe in Christ, so I'm going to be saved. Well, it's not going to work out for you. So I think it's actually very interesting. John 3.16 is what all the plastic Christians are always talking about. What about Revelation 3.16? Revelation 3.16, so then, because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. These lukewarmers, they're going to get rejected. And I'll just read the next verse too, because I think it's good. Because thou sayest, I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing and knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. That's how many of these lukewarmer Christians live difficult lives? How many of them go against the system and cause cause a scene? Jesus Christ was going into the synagogues and breaking all the rules and making a huge scene and going against all these wicked people. When have you ever seen these plastic Christians do that? I've never seen it. So let me read some comments just to give you an example. So this is somebody who their name is Carpenter for Christ. Look how arrogant they always are too. Oh, I'm a carpenter just like Jesus, and I'm I'm for Christ. So their comment was praying for forgiveness. Uh, oh, so somebody somebody has a, a thread called What Opened Your Eyes? And this person has a 44 in their name, of course. So Carpenter for Christ said that what opened their eyes was praying for forgiveness from Jesus Christ every night and praying for blessings on everyone, including em enemies. Uh, so somebody said praying for forgiveness every night for what? And then Carpenter for Christ says for sins. None of us are perfect as Jesus was. We are all sinners. I don't purposefully sin every day, but tis better to cover my ass than to leave it exposed. So here's a person that I actually, the, here's a, a reply to that, that this person I think is a good person. And they said to repent means to change your actions. Endlessly begging for forgiveness is retarded. You yourself need to change. You shall know them by their fruits, etc., etc. People who are just, well, Jesus saved me, and that's it. And you can just see they, their life hasn't changed at all. They just watch all the garbage programming. They go along with the satanic flow. It's a, a wide path to destruction. It's a straight and narrow path to get into heaven. So these people that are just like, well, whatever, Jesus forgives me of my sins, and that's it? That's all that you see them do? I don't think it's looking too good for them. And yeah, so these are just the lukewarmers, the ones who they say their little script every night before they go to bed, but they're a tranny and they know they're a tranny. They abuse hormones. They're in on these lies. How could you be a part of that system and think that it's going to work out good for you? I just don't understand that. So here, this is uh, Matthew. So Matthew chapter seven, there's some, a couple good things here. I mean, the whole chapter is very good. Matthew, any red text, you should just read it every day. Matthew chapter 7, verses 13 and 14. Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way. Broadway? Yeah. Broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. Now we'll skip forward a little bit. This is the same chapter, Matthew chapter 7, verse 22. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. 
And then I'll just read the next statement because it's all about critically reading. You got to actually read, right? Jesus spoke to people in parables. He wasn't because you have to actually listen to what he's saying and think about it hard. You can't just have a superficial understanding. Otherwise, you're going to be like a tear and not understand what Jesus is actually saying. So this is verse 24, chapter 7, verse 24 of Matthew. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them. It's not enough to just hear what Jesus says and have a superficial thing. You have to act and doeth them. I will liken him unto a wise man, which built his house upon a rock. It's about action. And I'm going to end this video with some, just a few verses from Luke chapter 9, starting at verse 23. So first I'll just say, I grew up in a town full of trannies, surrounded by trannies, and fake tranny Christians. It really put me off to the Christian religion, but I mean, that's kind of a good thing. You're not supposed to go to a church that has a logo and that has its own denomination and has a, a preacher that's taught. That's garbage these days. 501 C3, C333. These are a bunch of tranny fakers and they're just going to bring you straight to hell. So anyways, these phonies where I lived, every year, once a year, there would be some big show. And you're not supposed to do this. Your faith is supposed to be just yourself and Christ in the closet. You're not supposed to go out there and show, look how holy I am. So these trannies, once a year, one day a year, they would do this big show of carrying a cross, literally. They would have this wooden cross and carry it around. Oh, look how holy I am doing this gesture. Well, let's read what Jesus has to say. So this is Luke chapter 9, verse 23, starting at verse 23. And he said to them all, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, but whosoever will lose his life for my sake, the same shall save it. And just think of the Gospels. Jesus would walk up to people and say, come, come with me. And they would be in their boat, right? Their, their whole life is being a fisherman. Jesus says to them, come to me. And what do they do? They completely abandon their life, what they were doing. How many people live like that? No, they, they give it up one day and they don't even understand what it means to, right? They, they take things literally when it's not supposed to be taken literally. And they take things figuratively that are supposed to be taken literally. They have no discernment. They don't understand how to read the Bible. So they, they read something like this, take, take up his cross daily. And what do they do? They make some grand gesture of it once a year where they say, look how holy I am. I'm carrying this cross around the streets. It's foolish, foolishness. Just like in Jesus' day, people would completely abandon their life to follow him. You're supposed to abandon your old life, all of these satanic things that you were sure unwillingly at the time, but we all had these instincts that told us that it was wrong. You need to abandon these things and start living your life daily for Christ. And that means change, action. God bless everybody.